Be a person who gives thanks. Give thanks for the people around you. Pray over them. And thank the Lord for the people that you put in your life. Because everybody that's put in your life is put there for a reason. And for a purpose. And it's sometimes in the moment it's really hard to see them. Our S is, um, is supplication. Prayer, intercession, giving of thanks, and supplication. And supplication is, is so hard. This is the one that really convicts me. Supplication is such a challenge. <coughs> Here's my challenge with it. My challenge is that I'm one of these people, I'm one of these people that has a hard time getting close to people. I, I have I have about a thousand casual friends, and I have about three, if you include the water cooler, real friends in, in life. I just, I just don't grow close to people. And therefore, often, I don't know what's going on in their life because I don't let myself grow close to people. Right? Maybe it's that time my brother left me for dead. In the vehicle. But maybe not. Nonetheless, and, and so I struggle with this. So here's what I do. And this is what I've done my whole life. And I've been trying really hard to stop doing this. You, you see somebody in the hallway, and I bet you do this too. And you're walking one way, and they're walking the other way. And you say something, I, I don't talk the way you talk now. I, I understand that. I would say something like, hey, how are you doing? And so if I see Lydia in the hallway, and she's walking to class one way, and I walk into class the other way, I would say, hey, Lynn, how are you doing this morning? And then what I would do is I would keep walking. Because I need to get to class, and then she's got to get to class, right? And so what I just did was I said, Lydia, how are you doing? But then I said, how are you doing? And I care so ridiculously little about you that I'm not even going to listen to your answer. And I don't know if you do that. I do that. Hey, how are you doing? Hey, what's up? Hey, what's going on? And I just keep walking. And in doing that, what message do I send to her? I ask you a question how you're doing, but I truly don't care what the answer is. I'm doing it just to be polite. I'm doing it just because it's what everybody else says. And I just keep walking. And I don't care what your answer is, just so we're all real clear. I asked her how she is, but I, I don't give a rat's behind how she is. I'm just going to keep walking. And that's what we do in life. We do that all the time. I, I do it. You do it. I know we do it. People do that to me every day. People say, hey, how you doing? They just keep walking, and I just sit there, and sometimes I just stand there, and I just start naming the horrible things. <laughs> I shot my dog this morning. I got out of bed this morning and stretched my fell and broke my neck. And I just start making up all this stuff. And they're not even around to hear the answer. Why? Because they didn't really care what the answer was to begin with. This is one of those things that I've really started challenging myself with. And I'm, I'm not good at it. I'm not. But I want to be better at it. And so this is what I've started making myself try to do more and more. Hey, how are you doing? And then I stop. And I look at her and I ask her how you doing. And then you know what she's going to do? She's going to do what we all do. She's going to lie. She's going to lie. And not because Lydia naturally is a liar, though she probably is. Um, it's because that's what we do. Hey, how are you doing? I'm fine. How are you? Fine. And then we just keep walking. And we just sit there and now we just lie to each other to make our speech. Each other's feel better, right? I say fine, you say fine, um, and it's not true. And so what I've gone now is as the next day, I stop and ask, hey, how are you doing? She says, oh, I'm fine. No, good. how are you really doing? And now I have stopped what I'm doing. I've looked her in the eye. I've asked her how she's really doing. She's given me this lie that I know is a lie. And, but I'm saying, you know what? I love you enough and care about you enough that I really do want to know how you're doing. I'm making you my, you my priority right now. And you tell me if you don't get to know what something is going on in somebody's life by doing it that way. You will find out more from one honest conversation that you stop and look somebody in the eye than a thousand how are you doing for you keep walking. If a lady walked in the room right now and she came in and she said, I'm, I'm so sorry, a lady we don't know, local lady. And she, she's going along three or four little kids behind her and she just says, hey, I'm so sorry to bother your church this morning. But I live right down the road down here and my trailer burned down last night. And, and I lost everything. I don't know where to turn. I, I don't know what to do, guys. You, you tell me what we would do as a church. 
I know what we do as a church. There's no way in the world we let that lady walk out of here unless we helped her. No way. You and I both know what would happen. The men would form their little huddles. Because it's Sunday. Football Sunday. Right? The men would form their little huddles, and we would start talking about money. We'd start talking about a place to stay. We'd start talking about financial things, right? We'd form our little huddle. And then somewhere the women would form their little huddles and their little groups, right? They would have a little tea party kind of feel to it. And what would they start talking about? They'd start talking about clothes. And they'd start talking about what size are the kids. Oh, oh, what size does he wear? Oh, my little nephew Johnny's about that size. I bet he's got some clothes that he can use. And, and they would start talking about that. And you and I both know that there's nowhere in the world we would let that lady walk out of here unless we did something to help her. I know that and you know that. So why? Why is that different than you and I walking around with burdens that nobody's helping? Here's the difference. The difference is, is we know what the need was because the lady said it. We often don't know the needs and the burdens people are carrying because we don't really care what the answer is to how are you. The difference is, is when you know what the need is, you can do something about it. The reason we don't know what the need is is because we continue to say how are you and keep walking. We continue to not care what the need is. And in not caring what the need is, we also say I don't care about you. That's where supplication starts. I'm willing to help people, but first I've got to know the need. You're probably willing to help people, but first you've got to know the need. And for us to ever know the need, we've got to take the time to stop doing what we're doing and ask what the need is and care enough to know what that need is. My wife is amazing at this. This is my wife's greatest strength. Now, the downside, it, it makes her late for just about everything she ever goes to. I get that. And she is, she is a running punchline and it hurts all the time because she's always late. But she's often late because she comes across somebody on the playground and she asks them how they are and then she really asks them how they are and the next thing you know, she's out there praying with somebody on the playground. And, and, and I wish to goodness she wouldn't be late because it drives me crazy. But I wouldn't give up that part of her for anything in the world. Because it's the most beautiful aspect of who she is. And you know what I'm talking about. Because you've had those conversations with her. I'm the one that continues to walk by and say, hey, how are you doing? Keep walking. She's the one that listens to the answer. And it didn't really matter that I was on time. But she saw a need in Jesus. And I think that's what Paul wanted for Timothy. I think Paul wanted for Timothy to get around and to get to know people well enough to actually find out what the real needs are in their life and try to help them with their needs. Because isn't that ministry at its true root? Study the three and a half years of Jesus' ministry and tell me if it wasn't all supplication based. He walked around and saw the needs of people and he met people's needs. You're hungry, here's food. You're sick, here's healing. You've got a demon, let's chase that. And his ministry was so supplication-based. And that's what we're called to be. We're called to be like him. But you and I both know one of those things that stop us is that we don't really care when we ask, how are you? That's one of my challenges to you, because I think that was one of Paul's challenges to Timothy, is to care enough about people to see how they really are. And then I go the next step. How are you? Oh, I'm fine, Mr. Peters. No, sweet. How are you really doing? And she tells me how she's really doing. And then you know what she's going to ask me and what a lot of church people will ask you. They'll say, hey, well, can you pray for me? How many times has someone asked you to pray for them? <laughs> Hundreds? Thousands? So you're in Food City and, and someone says, hey, my, my aunt's sick. Will you pray for her? And what do you and I as Christians say? Yes. Yes, all of that, because that's the Bible answer. That's the Sunday school answer. Yes, I will. And then what do we do? We walk away and we forget. We walk away and we forget. And then the next time you see that person, you say, oh, my aunt's doing so much better. Thank you for praying for her. And you're like, I'm glad she's doing well. I'm, yeah. And we don't have an answer for it. Because we sit there, when someone asks us the question, we say yes because it's the right answer to say. And it's not that we're lying to them. We have every intention of praying for that person.
But we go away and we get busy doing something else and we forget. So I've taken it to the next step. I, I have been trying to do this and I have done it a bunch of times, not all the time, a bunch of times over this last 10 years. I'll go to Lydia and I'll say, how are you doing? And she'll say, she'll give me the lie, fine. And I'll say, no, how are you really doing? And she'll say, she'll say hey, I'm really worried about my mom. You know, really worried about my mom. And, and so I'll start talking to her about it. And then, I, and then what I try to do is I try to say, hey, can, can we pray for your mom? And I'm telling you, I have been praying with people in the frozen food section of Walmart. I've been praying with people in the produce department of Food City. I've been praying with people in Super Dollar. Because when people come up to me and say, hey, will you pray for this? I've now made it my habit that we stop whatever I'm doing right that moment and we pray for them. It's going to do two things. Two things. Uh, number one thing it's going to do is I just sent a message to Lydia of what's important to you is important to me. This is something that you've opened up and shared with on your heart, and, and it's important to me because it's important to you, sweetheart. And I take a moment to pray right then with Lydia for her mom. And then what's the next thing it does? Because Lydia and I had that encounter, it's way stronger in my head, and I'm way more likely to remember later on to keep praying for Lydia's mom. Because Lydia and I had a connection right there in that moment. It wasn't a passing, oh yeah, I'll do that and kept walking. It was me taking a moment and me investing something in it. Does that make sense? My, my dad, when he um, come by the fence that morning, he looked at Seth and I and he said, I don't want you to go in there. And he wasn't doing it because he was trying to rob us of our, our joy, or rob us of our fun, or, or try to be this false sport. He was doing it because he cared about us. And he said, this is some good advice that I want you to listen to because it will be a blessing to you if you'll listen to me. I have no doubt that's exactly what Paul did with Timothy. He says, Timothy, you're going to be a minister, and, and man, I want to see God use you. Uh, let's start first by you being a man of prayer. You become a man of prayer. You become someone who intercedes. That when you see something in your church or among your people that's not right, you step in. But you step in in love. You give thanks. Become a person who is so full of gratitude that you just give thanks. And do that for everyone. Thank the Lord for the people that he is surrounding with. Thank the Lord for the good things that he's giving you. Be a man of gratitude. Be a man who gives thanks. And supplications, when you see a need, help with that need. And when you don't see a need, form enough of a relationship with people that you can get down and actually figure out what the need is. And it'll make a difference. So you got pigs this morning? Good. As the band comes in, praise, or comes in place, let's go take a moment to pray over the uh, rest of my morning. <coughs> Dear Heavenly Father, I just thank you so much. What a beautiful scripture this is. I love that the scripture points to, to each one of us being important, each one of us having value, each one of us being something special that's in your sight, Lord, we're special. And thank you for that. Lord, I thank you for the reassurance in this, in this scripture that you want us to be saved, that you want us to come to a knowledge of the truth. I thank you for the reminder in this scripture that there is one way to you, and that's through Jesus. I thank you for the reminder that's there also, Lord. Lord, I thank you for the reminder in this scripture that Paul gave to Timothy to be a man of prayer. Be a person of prayer. Be a person who intercedes, a person who just has thanksgiving in their life, and someone who just meets the needs of other people. Walks around doing good as Jesus walked around. Doing good. Uh, Lord, may we take this message today, this beautiful passage from 1 Timothy. Uh, Lord, may we apply it to our lives. May we live in such a way that please you and glorify you. Lord, if there's any here this morning that haven't accepted you, uh, today, uh, today be the day of their salvation. Lord, if there's any today that just need prayer or encouragement, uh, let them come forward as we stand and sing in a second. Lord, let today be the day that puts them back on the right race, heading in the right direction. Let today be that day, Lord. Uh, Lord, what a wonderful day today is. Lord, we thank you so much that you are God. We pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Stand with us, guys.